as a reference, we're going to go back and forth using general paths. Example. This example says, show that the limit of x squared minus y squared divided by x squared plus y squared while x and y are getting closer and closer, the point is getting closer and closer to zero and zero does not exist. Perfect. First of all, remember the domain of this function. The domain of this function, since it's a rational, it means that we have to exclude zero and zero from, from the domain of the function. So we call that the domain is the set of all points, x and y, such that x and y, none of them are equal to the zero. Your denominator cannot be zero. But you're getting closer and closer to zero and zero. There we go. In step one, always try to plug in the value. If you get to L, or a constant as your z value, the limit is L. Plug in zero and zero. What do we get? We get the limit of zero squared minus zero squared, zero squared plus zero squared, which is equal to zero divided by zero. This is in determinant form. So we have to move on to next step. Step two. In step two, try to simplify this rational function. Can you simplify this? Is there any way that we can, you know, just write the numerator in factor form and get rid of some of the common elements? There is no way. Because on the denominator, I have x squared plus y squared. There is no way I can write it in factor form. And I don't have any common factor between numerator and the denominator. So simplifying doesn't work here for me. What I'm going to do, I'm going to use one of these general paths and simplify my function. If the outcome depends on M, I'm going to say, hey, the limit doesn't exist. So which one is the best choice? Remember that we have many different choices here. You're going to select one of these paths that helps you to simplify this function. Very well, I'm going to use y equals to mx. I'm going to choose this path. It passes through the origin. Let us start by using path y equals to mx. Remember that it passes through the origin. Okay, I have the limit of, on my numerator, I have x squared. I'm going to copy down x squared. I have subtraction. I'm copying down subtraction. I have y squared, but my y is equal to mx. See what I'm doing? I'm trying to get rid of one of the variables. It helps me to simplify my function. Divided by x squared plus y squared, my y is mx. So plus mx squared. And I don't have any y left. I only have x. I reduced a two variable function into a one variable function. My x approaches zero. Perfect. Here you have x squared, don't forget the limit, x squared minus m squared x squared divided by x squared plus m squared x squared and x approaches zero. On the numerator, on the denominator, I can factor out x squared. 
So I left with the limit of x squared, one minus m squared, divided by x squared, one plus m squared. And x approaches zero. As you can see, you can cancel out the common factor. You left with the limit of limit of one minus m squared divided by one plus m squared, x approaches zero. This is just a constant, one minus m squared divided by one plus m squared. m is a constant. I can select m to the one. You can select m to the two. It can be a half. It can be negative two. m is a constant. m is a number. And we have many different choices for our n. So what's the meaning of that? It means that if I plug in n to be one, the limit is equal to zero. If I plug, for example, two for m, I get one minus four, negative three divided by five. I get a different value for L. You can choose any other number for your M and you get a different value. So we don't get a unique number. It means that the limit depends on M and it doesn't exist. Depends on Another example for you. This example says, if 